Today we're going to be looking at a tool that will mount virtual CDs on a real Amiga. So we need a virtual CD. I'm going to make an ISO file of this CU Amiga CD-ROM. So I have my memory card inserted, the 16 gig card Amiga. I've got some files on here already. I've made an ISO folder that's currently blank and I've inserted uh, the uh, first CU Amiga uh, CD-ROM that they ever made, the Mega CD-ROM and in fact it was actually an Aminet 7 archive, I think it was a cut down version of it but yeah, as you can see the actual name of the disk is called Aminet 7. So I've got a program called Magic ISO uh, installed on my machine. Uh, I'm running Windows 10 uh, at the moment and it's an old program but it still works great uh, with Windows 10. So if we just right click on the DVD drive um, and then we go to Magic ISO, make an image from the iDrive, the drive letter might be different for you, and then it pops up with screen, yeah I'm going to try it save the format as a standard ISO and the output file we're going to have as E ISO and then we'll call it um, aminet 7iso You can browse to all your folders and everything but I know exactly where I want to save the file. So make sure that you've got your uh, drive selected, if you've got more than one drive, I've just got one CD1 drive installed on this machine and uh, we just click on OK and what that will do is that will start copying the disk over so just wait for that to finish and there we go it's done so if I go into Amiga ISOs there we go, as you can see, we've got our ISO there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to eject that and we're going to go over to the Amiga. So as you can see, we've got our um, memory card inserted here. And if I go into it and click on ISO folder, there we go, there's our image that we um, transferred over earlier. If you don't see this, you might have to go to show all files uh, to see those folders. I've already done that. So um, the program we're going to be using is Disk Image GUI. So if I load that up, it looks something like this. Now, to where where do you get Disk Image GUI? Well, uh, you can get get it from Amunet. Um, I recommend just downloading it, putting it onto a memory card like this, and then uh, you extract it and then copy it to for example programs on your hard drive um, so I've got it here and the main programs here you'll see that um, it's on my desktop at the moment this is what's called as uh, leaving out and putting away so I've left out that file on the desktop so um, if I put it away you'll see that it suddenly goes back in the folder if I select the file leave out goes back onto the desktop somewhere Right, where is it? Where is it? There it is. Okay, I'll just put it back over there. So one thing you'll need to do when you go to Disk Image GUI, um, open it up, you'll need to run this install files first. I've already run it, uh, but what it'll do is it'll install some import important library files that the software needs. So if you're getting any error messages saying it can't mount an ISO file, then uh, it's most probably that you've forgotten to do this step. So that's really important that you just double click that, runs and uh, copies some files across. So, disk image GUI. So we've got um, IDFO, so we can mount ADF files if we want. Um, and the most important thing uh, today is that we want to mount a CD. So that's ICDO. So if we click on that, and then what do we want to do with this drive? Well, we want to insert an image. So now this, all I've got to do is 
browse to my memory stick and ISO and there's my file. Click on that, click on OK and lo and behold we have Amunet 7, we have our CD. So it's as though I've inserted that CD. I can quit, quit the program um, and the CD still exists. Uh, as you can see, this is not taking up much memory at all, really. I'm on an A1200. Granted, that is accelerated. I've got uh, the ACA uh, 1233N card, if anybody's interested in the specs. Um, but, uh, yep, yeah, our CD is there. Um, but I don't have a real CD drive attached to this Amiga. You may have seen in a previous video that I actually did that. Um, but in this instance, I don't have a real CD drive uh, plugged in. I'm just using this disk image GUI. So, and we can browse the disk as normal. Um, the only things that we can't do is is run it um, a CD in like CD32. Um, it's very diff difficult to do that um, on the Amiga 1200 anyway. Uh, there, I know there is some kind of emulation that you can do booting from a floppy disk. But in this instance, virtual disks, you can only use them in Workbench. But as you can see, this is working really fast. Um, the access times are just super fast because really it's virtual. We're running completely off of the memory card. Uh, we don't have to cache anything at all in memory, so uh, we're not using up tons and tons of memory. Um, and yeah, uh, we can go to the CU Amiga magazine. So remember this is not just an Amunet CD this was uh, CU Amiga's first ever uh, CD-ROM that they produced so Audio Master 4 that was an awesome program oh, we've got some game demos in here as well Virtual Karting, oh, I remember that awesome game but yeah, hopefully you found this uh, video very interesting um, oh, one note uh, what, what happens when I'm finished with the CD well, I'll run the program again click on I CDO and as well you can see the name of the file that we currently got in there. Click on that, click on eject and I've just ejected the virtual CD. So nice easy piece of software. Um, I hope you found this useful. This is really good for um, if you want to uh, access, maybe you've got an old collection of Amiga CDs that you want to run on your real Amiga but maybe your CD drive's not working on it anymore or you don't have it anymore um, but you still have the discs so this is an awesome way to um, use uh, virtual CDs on a real Amiga. If you enjoyed this video please leave a like and subscribe if you wish to see more and thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.